Oh, hi. I didn't see you there. My name is Bliss Foster. Welcome back to the Margiela series where we're exploring every single runway show that Martin Margiela produced at his eponymous house. We find ourselves in fall 2005. Great news, I have acquired all of the pages of the magazine that was sent out as the invitation, so we get to look through that in enormous detail. If you were a journalist or a buyer or just a super cool person in Paris at the time, the only way that you get to see this collection is by attending the Maison's headquarters at 163 Rue Saint-Marc, which is now their former headquarters. It's a really beautiful complex. I've been lucky enough to be there twice. And never again, because they've switched locations and I don't get to go there anymore. But yeah, the idea that this is being presented entirely through a magazine that the Maison created is uh, that it's, that's very, very important. And so we will begin with an all rise. This is one of the most reposted and one of the most seen parts of the entire Maison's history. This is a trench coat that has sort of been rigged into a hoodie-like thing. You may be seated. I don't want to wear you out too. Whoa. Okay, you may be seated. I don't want to wear you out too quickly. So we know that paparazzi was a huge part of celebrity culture in the early 2000s. That was kind of the height of celebrity gossip. It kind of always feels like we're at the height of celebrity gossip, doesn't it? We also know that the Maison is heavily leaning into the anonymity element in this collection in a really new, innovative way. Let's talk about that for a second. The anonymity theme has been with the Maison for its entire history. The, the models have had their faces covered, sometimes with just the plain claws. And then we moved on to more creative ways, like with the cellophane glasses and then even with a paintbrush just painting across the model's eyes. So now we're moving into a more practical real life version of that wherein celebrities are trying to hide themselves from the paparazzi. And there has been a long, long history of celebrities trying to avoid paparazzi in uh, lots of different creative or sometimes kind of obvious ways. In the past, the anonymity theme for the models in the Maison shows has resulted in some pretty uh, mean and unfair coverage of the Maison. There was one reporter who asked Martin straight up if he was anti-woman because he was covering these women's faces, which of course, if you look at the oeuvre of Martin Margiela, uh, that is a completely ridiculous question. He is very clearly celebrating women. But it wasn't just the presentation of the magazine that was making the point for this season. They, they actually incorporated that theme into the clothes specifically with this incredible trench piece by uh, pulling it up over their heads and making it where you're able to hide your face and the, the clothes themselves accommodate that need for different people, specifically celebrities. This was on the back of trench coats. It was on the back of other jackets and bomber jackets that were raised considerably like integrated hoods with the collars even taking the form of visors to minimize the visibility for sneaky cameras on the side trying to snap those photos. So he applied the idea of anonymity to the clothes themselves, which surprisingly is a first for the Maison. That would be something where I, I, I would expect that that's in other clothes in the history, but it just isn't. This is the first time, which is really cool. Really cool. It's fascinating. Thank you, fashion journalists. Let's, uh, let's try to be a little bit more descriptive with our terms here. It's interesting that the anonymity theme has mostly been a product of the styling of these shows rather than incorporated into the clothes themselves since the Maison has such an extensive history of incorporating their themes into the clothes themselves. They're surprisingly effective at that. But yeah, all that to say, it is cool and neat. The, the pockets and the buttons were actually placed higher up on the pieces themselves and the back of the piece was actually shorter than the front so that it could further emphasize that fit and sort of give the wearer a hunched over look, which is kind of what you do when you are trying to hide from cameras is you kind of try to like minimize your physical presence. Undisputably, this is like, this is one of the best things in the Maison's history. This is such an incredible piece of product. I love this thing so much. And so the whole magazine with its tabloid style and sensationalism was maybe a way to poke fun at a shallow press that didn't get it, and also to work with the anonymity theme in a way that spoke to the retailering skills at the Maison. And it's really funny actually, because a couple of months before this collection came out, there's this picture of the supermodel Giselle who is, uh, very clearly, this photo is what inspired this piece. And this is a hilarious critique of the celebrity gossip magazines. Uh, the, the article that accompanies the photos of this piece, yeah, the name of the article is Saved by Her Dogs, and then it just literally shows somebody walking their dogs. This might feel slightly off topic, but dude, celebrity gossip is the dumbest shit of all time. Like, I guess if like something super insane is happening, like Tom Cruise attends celebrity orgy and we know that to be a fact. 
Like, that's at least, wow, that's super crazy, whatever. But like, just sort of George Clooney attends Disneyland with nephew. I don't know, like, who gives a shit? I don't know, whatever. Oh shit, it's a train. Are we ready to see the train? Train time, train time, train time. Wow, very train. Such train. Goodbye, train. Hey, if you guys want to make my dad feel super good, you should leave a comment that says, oh, Mr. Foster, you did a great job with the back porch. And also the distance of the individual railings is really elegant looking. Okay, so even more than that, the idea of these wig cap vests that were shown in the feature that was called Before and After highlighted the collection's artisanal pieces this season. But they also featured a key addition to the anonymity discussion. Wigs were flipped inside out and used to create a vest, taking a trope of disguise and turning it into clothing. Unbeatable. This shit is so good. But wait, there's more. In the article, The Making Of, Marjola introduced a great addition to the found object universe, while also furthering the anonymity theme, making dresses and skirts out of medical gauze in different shades of pink and beige. This is pretty clearly a discussion on plastic surgery, like when someone would go in to change key parts of their facial features, which kind of plays into the anonymity thing, but also into the, the celebrity culture of getting plastic surgery but never talking about it. Obviously, it's a little bit different now. It's, it's a little bit cooler to like come forward and be like, I'm getting a nose job done and I want everyone to know because I don't want to uphold like negative beauty standards. When of course those same people who are doing that are also getting like 40 other procedures done, but then they'll come forward about like just the nose job and it'll be like, they're so brave. It's hard to know how many celebrities were actually wearing Margella at this point. I, I, and I'm just not willing to go through the TMZ archives to check on it, but it would be really funny if someone wore this gauze piece to like say a red carpet, like a really eccentric celebrity, not even realizing that this piece is in a very literal way making fun of them. So we have no visual accompaniment to that joke, but let's just pretend that there's an image here of that and we can all laugh to ourselves about it. But the cool thing about this, even outside of the realm of it being a joke, is that ultimately it's being done to appreciate the women in our lives exactly the way that they are, which is the ongoing theme throughout the entire Maison's history. These dresses were assembled in a spiralized shape, clinging to the body the way that an ace wrap clings to your ankle, creating a bias effect. Which is crazy because before researching this episode, I've never even realized before that when you're wrapping a wound, you are wrapping it on the bias. I, I had never... It had never even occurred to me. So in the future, when someone is like, whoa, sick bandage, you can be like, thanks, it's bias cut. I really like it when things are bias cut. It really just changes the textile in such interesting ways. I just and the best part of these pieces is that they are closed or possibly embellished with fake closures that are the little closures on actual bandages. In a way, it must be stuff like this that makes John Galliano thrilled to work at Margella, since he is, of course, bias cut guy. Let's talk about a couple other key spreads in this magazine. Oh my gosh. There was a bird outside of the window just now that was like in full free fall mode. Nature is scary. In a spread called Baby on Bubbles, it is following a model wearing a short satin dress and a new style of boa during several points during an evening out. And when I say boa, I mean a boa constrictor. Like a snake. This is a 3D printed velvet replica of a boa constrictor snake wrapping around the model's neck. And I'm not like saying for sure that this Britney moment had anything to do with this back in 2001, but uh, you know. But seriously folks, this does play pretty brilliantly into the trompe l'oeil legacy that the Maison has established very, very firmly in their oeuvre. Hey, it's me, Bliss, editing this episode. I didn't make it fully clear that um, the, the boa snakes are, that they're actually tromploid onto feather boas. That, that is a tromploid, it's not a real snake. Or maybe this is just Martin being like, hey paparazzi, you guys are snakes. In this spread, the model wore high black fishing boots that are similar to the thigh-high rubber boots in fall 1990, which is a deep cut of the Maison. In the Reality Studio article, an evening dress was made of three wedding dresses of different styles and eras. The tops of the dresses were assembled into a bustier freeing up the full volume of all three skirts, but three slits revealed tuxedo pants worn underneath, which is maybe anonymity in a different understanding. 
Another one called True or False presented clothes covered in scales made of leather to try and emulate the skin of a reptile. The article called On the Red Carpet jokingly staged a lot of models wearing evening dresses walking a fake red carpet event that never actually happened. On page 19, they even did a fake ad for flights from Paris to Venice, which is funny because the team actually used to take flights to Venice frequently to visit their, their manufacturer. One of the manufacturers is in Venice. Very Proustian of them, just kind of like taking things that are like little jokes for the team themselves and then turning it into like, kind of codifying it into this like big mystery where you'd have to actually know an enormous amount about the Maison in order to sort of understand what they're even doing there. But when you're just flipping through the magazine with no context, it's like, wow, what is this fashion brand doing? Like, why the Paris to Venice? League? Like, what does it all mean? Super interesting business point about this season is that it was the launch of Line 22, which is shoes for men and women, which included tabby boots, obviously. But it also included the stilettos from last season, the after party shoes, those were released as well. The last feature was a horoscope that was styled horror scope let's have lots of like spooky graphics popping up here like lots of like ghosts going up and lots of like maybe a vampire with like his teeth out maybe a little bit of blood coming off of the tooth i hope this is clear this is a horoscope parody written in a style created by surrealists called the exquisite corpse which may sound weird but isn't actually weird at all from wikipedia Exquisite corpse is a method by which a collection of words or images is collectively assembled. Each collaborator adds to a composition in sentence, either by following a rule, like the adjective noun adverb verb the adjective noun. Each collaborator adds to a composition in sequence, either by following a rule, like with Mad Libs, where it's like this, it's like really advanced Mad Libs, or by being allowed to see only the end of what the previous person contributed. The name is derived from a phrase that resulted when Surrealists first played the game. So like the first time they played it, it resulted in the sentence, the exquisite corpse shall drink the new wine. And this is what people did before the internet was invented. Fun. So we have another continuation of Surrealism being incorporated into the Maison where we had a entire episode that was heavily inspired by Surrealist thinkers. And not just taking the cheap way out, like with like, you know, like, oh, this is like a thing that Magritte did. It, it actually like incorporated the philosophy of what the Surrealists were doing. That episode was really good. If you haven't seen it, you should check it out. So yeah, again, Surrealism is being incorporated as well as the idea that it, it takes many, many people to compose something great. And that the practice of creating with a team where you're responsible for a part of the whole. This, in fact, is why originally the, the, the name of the house was just Martin Margiela. And then that eventually got replaced with Maison Martin Margiela because it was the team that was doing so much of this. It was under the direction of Martin, but that the entire team was the one executing the idea. It's a little bit more complicated than that. You can check out the uh, We Margiela documentary, Patrick Scallon, who is the brand's communication officer. He actually explained in detail what the difference between Martin Margiela and Maison Martin Margiela was. But for our purposes today, it's not like this is inaccurate, but that's the easiest explanation for where we are right now. The, the last pages of Margiela's tabloid listed the real tabloids that inspired his tabloid, as well as a message that read, this paper took us weeks to write. Do respect to those who do this on a daily basis. Which is hilarious. Also, we have this ad for a sex shop. Lol. And that's it. Go join that Patreon so that you can watch the full extended episodes of the Margiela series. There's also an exclusive episode of the Margiela series that will never be made public. It is, uh, there's no public version of it. I think it's spring, summer, 1993. But you also get a bunch of other exclusive stuff, including the Discord, where you get to join lots of other fashion heads and talk about fashion all day. Ignore your schoolwork, ignore your job, forsake your friends and family, and talk on my Discord all day long. I love you so much that you are my phone background. I'm not going to show you because it's my favorite picture of you. We can talk about it later. Bye.